A one-stop shop for coronavirus testing has been set up in a shipping container in the northland town of Kaitaia. Northland doctor Lance O'Sullivan has been working on the mobile clinic for weeks and says it's now part of a compound where six of his staff will also live on site so as not to risk passing COVID onto their families. The clinic opens today and he says they're there for the long haul, likely two to three months. He spoke to our reporter, Nita Blake-Person. We've got a compound here in Kaitaia and that's the, that's the clinic out there. So it's a 40-foot um, shipping container that we've converted into a medical clinic and we have a whole lot of camper vans where our staff are staying. Um, we've created a bit of a compound here. So what we've got is we've got a, a protocol here. We've got wardens that will um, help people um, be triaged so they'll figure out where they need to go. Then they'll be go to a place um, where they'll be... Uh, they will be rapidly assessed by a clinical team um, and, and they'll determine whether they need to be tested for COVID or not. Um, I'm anticipating that maybe 15% of people that turn up will need to be tested, which is a throat, so a nasopharyngeal swab, a swab um, passed through the nostril. Um, and then we're also assessing for people that may be clinically unwell from, from COVID or any other health problem, to be honest. So someone's had a, people are still going to have heart attacks. People are still going to have um, meningitis. Still, people are going to have, still have, kids are going to have ear infections. And so we are also assessing for that. Um, and then if they need treatment, we're right next to the pharmacy. We get the treatment arranged for them. If they need to be hospitalised, we've got protocols for that. If they need to be tested, we'll test them and send them home to self-isolate and we'll get a result to them and then follow up with them what the um, next step is. What's the demand like at the moment and how easy is it for anyone else to replicate the setup you guys have got? There's this phase that everyone's in. They're at home, they're scared, they haven't been able to access services. We're in the point of about to open up. We haven't opened up officially yet. Um, we, I suspect, will be busy. Um, because there's a lot of fear and anxiety in the community. And on top of that, there are people that are still sick. This morning we just saw a guy who had a, a really bad infection of his wrist. Um, and so these are being these are things that aren't being attended to because of the the way the health system's basically gone in the primary care space. It's ter it's it's hibernated and it's a massive concern. As in people with health issues which aren't coronavirus aren't getting them dealt with and they're just going from bad to worse? 100%. 100%. I mean, the biggest issue we have, and I believe over time, is going to be the fact that we're missing all of these things because of our attention on coronavirus. It's not that it's not important, but there are other things that are being missed and it's a massive concern. Are you able to take me through the camper vans that are there for your staff? So none of your staff are going home at the moment. They're there around the clock, uh, available to take care of people? Yeah, we, we're here 24-7. We're not servicing 24-7 because that's unsafe and it's unfair. But we're here because these people don't feel it's fair on their whānau to go home uh, after having been serving people all day with corona, you know, potential risk of coronavirus. So, yeah, so that's where we're at the moment. Staff are staying here. We, we would hope that we rotate out some um, so that these people are getting a break in the next couple of weeks. And in your clinic and with the testing and everything, do you feel you've got everything you need? Are you well equipped? I'm, I'm anticipating we'll be well equipped, yeah. I mean, oh, look, I, uh, have we got everything we need? No. Do we, does the country have everything? We need? No. Does the world have everything it needs? No. It's an imperfect situation and we're doing our best. Um, I'm, I, mean, I am confident that we, we will get what we need as much as is available. So, yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't really want to, you know, sort of say that, you know, we're up here and we're not getting what we need. I mean, I, um, you know, I, I just... I do have hope and trust that we're going to get everything that we need right now and for the next, you know, foreseeable future, so the next three months. As a health professional watching this pandemic unfold, how yep. do you feel right now? Last night I felt quite afraid, to be honest. Now, I, I don't want to sound like a panic vision, but last night for some bizarre reason I had this gut feeling was like, my gosh, this is something big, and I know everyone knows this, but it was it was a bit it was a little bit um, it was a bit of a moment. I 
you know, I know that I am equipped. I've spent my life and my career preparing for this moment. I'm equipped to, to do what I'm doing. So I have absolute confidence in what I'm doing and, and where I am. I believe that we can, we, um, we can do as much as we can. We, we can't do everything we want. And I understand that, and that's part of my job and part of the people that work with me understand that there'll be losses, but there'll be wins, and we just hope the wins out, outweigh the losses. And that's Dr Lance O'Sullivan speaking to our reporter, Nita Blake-Person.